Welcome to this service of Holy Eucharist. Today, the Church celebrates the baptism of Christ and the beginning of Jesus' active ministry. What a joy it is to share with you today from the parish church of Roshmia St. Andrew. We meet as ever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's not too late to collect chalk and instructions for chalking your door. There are packs here near the south door in church. I didn't get a video, but I did get a still of us chalking St. Andrew's door as we prayed for God's blessing on all who enter this base, this place of prayer. Our opening hymn is a gentle reminder of our own waters. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from your sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gloria echoes the song of the angels and praises God for his mercy.
Let us take a moment in silence, remembering all we carry in our hearts and ourselves. These intentions are gathered together in the words of the Collect Prayer on this feast of Christ's baptism. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us, who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Chris opens the scriptures for us today, but first, the Old Testament lesson from the prophet Isaiah. The Old Testament lesson is from the prophet Isaiah and the 43rd chapter. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honoured, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your love. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering if they in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, and he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When all the people were being baptised, Jesus was baptised too, and as he was praying, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form, like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. Names. Names are important. When you or I were christened or baptised, we were given our name. Once all the forms we had to fill in called them Christian names. Now they are forenames. How our names are used is important. I knew that when my mother said, Christopher, in certain tone, I'd better take notice and do what was required of me. But we know too, from the way in which our names are spoken, whether we are loved or needed, or sadly, sometimes not wanted. I mentioned christening earlier. The gospel for this first Sunday of Epiphany jumped straight from the wise men and their gifts to the infant child, to a young man stepping into the water to be baptised by his cousin John. This was a baptism of cleansing, repentance, rather than a naming ceremony. But from that moment on, Jesus was true to his calling as the Son of God, in whom God was well pleased. But I want to return to the reading from Isaiah. The promises spoken in our reading from Isaiah give assurance and comfort in uncertain times. God's people, to whom Isaiah spoke, had been exiled. They'd been driven away from their homes. They don't know what is coming next. They've been waiting for a really long time. And this has probably led to feelings of anxiety and deep disappointment. There's nothing worse, is there, than when you're ill, if you don't know what's wrong, or when you're totally lost of not knowing how you might find your way. And these are words of hope and comfort to a displaced people that God indeed had not abandoned them. Maybe they are words we too need to hear as the pandemic surrounds us and restricts our daily lives. More importantly though, as God speaks through Isaiah, it is clear that he doesn't just view his people as a group of exiles or captives. God knows each one by name. There is great comfort in the thought that God cared enough to know the names of each 
and everyone. God calls this community, which has experienced great loss and oppression, he calls them precious. He calls them redeemed, worthy of knowing their names. And that's you and me as well. God knows them and he knows what they're experiencing. God calls them out of exile back home. And in this passage, God is telling them, you can go home now. They have a journey ahead, but God is promising to be with them on the way back home, just as he is with us. And knowing someone's name implies a relationship. It opens the door for acts of care and kindness. When you hear that someone's in trouble, if you know their name, you will be more likely to, to provide help or to act. God acts on behalf of his people and not for the first or the last time. Though those in power had cast this community of Israelites aside and spread them apart. So God calls them by name, gathers them together, just as we might feel that the pandemic has split us apart in our worship between those able to come and those who've been shielding or who are concerned about infection. God, who knows their names, claims them as worthy and promises a future where he will be with them every twist and turn of the way. Whatever it is up ahead, God will be with them. In fact, the passage says, when you pass through the waters and when you walk through fire, I'll be with you. God is not promising us that they or we will avoid hardship or difficult times. Yet God does promise his presence with us during those times. Difficult days, days when the news is bad or is of man's inhumanity to man. Those days are not proof that God is no longer present. Never believe that. They are days in which God's presence is felt in ways that stop us in our tracks. They are those days when God's love dances alongside grief and sorrow. In the worst of moments, it can make a world of difference to remember that we are never alone. Whatever community you know that feels forgotten, perhaps it's your own, God is calling now by name, gathering up and gifting his presence. That's really good news. There is though another side to this. I've often been on Rushmere Common when someone is calling frantically for their dog who's disappeared into the gorse bushes or woodland and is totally ignoring their master's command. The call of Jesus requires a response. When we responded to that call at our baptism or our confirmation, we accepted the salvation that Jesus gives us through his obedience to the call he received as the Son of God. And as we accept him in salvation, as we hear him call us our names in a more personal way, it is a loving call and it calls out the love that each one of us has for one another, for our neighbour and for those in need. So as we start 2022, let us remember this. We are precious. We are known by name. And whatever the future holds, we are not to fear. Rather, when we are called, 
let us respond to that call using our time and our talents to, to build the community that is St Andrews to be a beacon of love and service in our neighbourhood. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. Let us pray to the God who calls each by name. We pray for all baptised Christians to live out their calling in loving and holy lives. We pray for those preparing for baptism and confirmation, for parents and godparents to be given the grace and perseverance to keep faithfully the promises made. Let us pray for each one of us in the role to which you have called us at St Andrews, that we may be faithful to that calling, 
and to be mindful of the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all you have called to work for you in the mission field as teachers or preachers, for charity workers with Christian Aid, Tear Fund, World Vision and many others. Thank you for all those who work to alleviate the stress and poverty, both in this country and abroad. For those who work through debt agencies, agricultural projects, youth employment and environmental projects, to give people the opportunity to improve their life and their self-worth. We pray, Lord, for the people of Yemen, of Afghanistan, Syria and Lebanon, who suffer constant hunger and war. Call out from every nation, people of peace and integrity, to guide in local, national and international conflicts. We pray for openness to hear God's wisdom and to follow his lead. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for harmony and understanding in our relationships with family and neighbours, for the willingness to give and to receive, for the generosity of forgiving love. We pray for all young people in their return to school this week. Be with those who have to isolate because of COVID. And we ask your protection for all teachers and NHS staff, that schools may remain open and hospitals able to cope with all who are sick. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for those whose weakness and pain make it hard for them to pray. We remember those who have asked for our prayers particularly. Janet, Ellen, Janet, Mary, Betty, Levat, Anne, Mark. Fiona, Rene, Margaret, Abby, Jane, William, Myra, and Witch. May they sense the support and love of the Church of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. We pray for those whose souls have left behind their frail and broken bodies and can now fly freely to live in God's company for the whole of eternity. We remember especially Dennis Beaumont and Carl Watson and all those we have loved in years past. Bless and comfort their loved ones and bring us all in your good time to share the joy of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord. our prayer. We give you thanks, Lord, for calling us by name and keeping us safe through all the storms and difficulties of this life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jean, for leading our intercessions. We are the body of Christ. In one spirit, we are all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. I haven't sung this next hymn for years, and this is a particularly beautiful version. Picking up the words from Isaiah, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Perhaps you need to hear this today. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You celebrated your new gift of baptism in signs and wonders at the Jordan. Your voice was heard from heaven to awaken faith in the presence among us of your word made flesh. Your spirit was seen as a dove, revealing Jesus as your servant and anointing him with the oil of gladness to preach the good news to the poor. Therefore, as we celebrate the union of earth and heaven. We rejoice to echo the song of the angels in heaven forever praising you and singing.
Lord, you are holy indeed. The source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and of wine may be to us the body and blood of your, our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather it to one in your kingdom. All who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of John the Baptizer, St. Christopher, St. Andrew, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Be assured, we are one body, the Church, as we pray together this prayer 
for a spiritual communion. Heavenly Father, as, as we, we participate with your people in these holy mysteries, we pray you now to grant your gift of spiritual communion with trust in your faithfulness and your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his suffering. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to, to come, come to this your table, merciful Lord, Lord trusting in our own righteousness, righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Jesus, your beloved Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Isaiah reminds us with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. I keep you and your family always in my prayers. May God, who in Christ gives us the spring of water, welling up to eternal life, perfect you in the image of his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, those you love and those who love you, wherever they may be, today and until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. And rise in glory. The service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.